well, I just wanted to jump on here real quick because I know we haven't been live in a while, but we're out here in the garden working. It's a beautiful evening. My wife's been doing some great work out here, trellising things, and we've been watering and just taking care of the garden. So I thought I'd jump on here real quick and just give you all kind of a show of what we're doing, what's going on here. Um, and just see what's going on. So let me show y'all real quick. I already showed you a quick overview um, of how the garden's looking, but I'm gonna kind of walk around and, and show you some stuff that she's been working on very hard and diligently. Uh, if anyone knows um, pruning, trellising, and keeping up with um, indeterminate tomatoes, that's a lot of work. I didn't know how much work it was until I seen her out here doing it. So she planted, what, what would you say, babe, like 10? Um, no, probably about 12, 13. See, that's her right there. She's working hard in the garden. So about 12 or 13 indeterminate tomatoes. So, you know, that's definitely a lot um, of what's going on here. So let me take you over there real quick and I'll show you kind of what she's been doing. As you can tell, our garden is going great right now. So this is one of the areas that she's been working on. She's been tying them up to our cattle panel trellis that we have. Um, really getting it going. Um, she's been pruning a lot and trying to open it up. Because one thing you want to have with tomato plants is airflow. So whenever you're pruning these, you want to try to open the plants up and, and allow them to be able to have air. I mean, look at these giant tomatoes. Those things are massive, absolutely massive right there. You know, we got some little ones and we got some other big ones right there. See, look at that, man. I'll tell you what, I'm not a tomato person, but I can definitely enjoy the look of the tomatoes. I love salsa. Salsa is definitely something I like. So I like the tomatoes in the salsa, but I don't know about y'all, but I'm not one to eat just raw tomatoes, just fresh out of the ground. I know a lot of people do. They put a little bit of salt on it, they eat it, and, and that's what it is. But this is kind of what we're doing now. So she's been pruning a lot of these. Let me take you to the other side real quick um, and kind of show you what she's been doing over there. Look at all these beautiful wildflowers, man. Just going crazy in the garden, looking good over here. Let me take you to the other side. This is the other side of it. This is our little tunnel that we made. Let me swing around. Those are those sunflowers we showed you in that video. Look how much they've grown already. These things are massive already. I mean, absolutely massive. It's crazy. So again, she's been just pruning these, cleaning them up. I mean, hold on, let me get, let's see if I can get in. Look at that thing. Look how massive that tomato is. I mean, sorry. Look at that in my hand. I mean, that thing is huge. All that. Got some more down there. Got another huge one right here. What's up, buddy? Tell me something, buddy. Okay, I'll get it. Our dog loves to dig holes, so she's digging holes in our yard. But see, she's been doing this side as well, opening it up, causing the airflow to go in so those pollinators can get in there and, and do their work. I mean, we have quite a bit of tomatoes already on this. I didn't even show this side. I mean, look at those. Even though tomatoes are self-pollinating. Oh, well, I learned something. Tomatoes are self-pollinating. So scratch what I just said. <laughs> look at all that. Look at all that. Beautiful. I'm looking forward to the salsa this year. I tell you what, man, it's going to be nice. Yeah. I have to wait for the jalapenos and peppers, or unless we go buy some. But this is our asparagus ferns that's kind of getting out of hand here. So if you're commenting... I'm sorry, I don't see it. I don't know, but hello to whoever jumped on. 
No? It says welcome to live chat, so I think it's there. I hope it's not on kids. But that's our asparagus ferns that has been growing like crazy. We're excited for that. Um, you know, like I said, I've been talking about the tomatoes. She's been working on trellising. She's on, working on some right now. Let me do a slow turn. That way I don't make y'all sick. See her right there? Look at that. Look at that gorgeous woman. Woo! Man, I'm a lucky man. It is pretty hot outside. It's you know, a little shady. It is Texas hot. So this is what she's been working on. Pruning, cutting them up, yeah. trellising them. I, I pruned the other ones you just saw. I pruned them like every, I don't know, once a week, every five days or so. But sometimes the, they just grow so fast that the branches on the low eight inches of the plant, they grow so quickly and they come out and then they start branching everywhere. I get leaves everywhere or like it gets so bushy like this where I can't tell what are leaves and what is not. I'm not taking out all the leaves, but this is what it is. I don't want to take out the ones with the flowers. Thank you, Amaya. Amaya? I hope I, hope I say your name right. But I'm taking out maybe 30% of these. Um, I want a high fruit production so I don't want my plant focusing on making these beautiful green leaves that's right I want them to focus on the fruit and this and particular variety is burpee super sauce they get huge yeah and um, this is what happens when you don't keep up with them uh oh look at that see that womp womp if I would have kept up with the pruning, I probably would have caught this early on. Um, sometimes if there's so much um, leaves in there and it's so bushy, all the insects will go in there and they'll eat the tomatoes. Yep. Um, you'll get a bunch of squash bugs, <laughs> roly polies, all that good stuff. So you don't want that to happen. You want airflow, you want sunlight, you don't want a habitat on yeah. your tomatoes, especially tomatoes, because you want the fruit. I planted these for fruit, so I'm going to get fruit. <laughs> <laughs> and she said they get huge. I'm going to show you all again. Look at that thing. Look how massive that is. I mean, that's that's a pretty big tomato. Can you pass me the butcher string? The butcher string. Oh, there it is. Yeah, and I'm trellising these on a cattle panel. But because I let some of the branches kind of go wild for a while, when, once it gets hot, it gets hard to come out here. And oh my <laughs> so now i have to take these lower branches that already produced huge heavy uh branches and flowers etc yep. and i have to trellis them up on the cattle panel so that's what she's doing now she's working on these she has these to do over here i'm sorry i'm trying to be smooth with the camera i don't want to make y'all sick or anything so i apologize all right y'all want to see the other giant tomatoes yeah, i'll show it to y'all again now that Yes, burpees super sauce. They are okay, so let me show y'all some of the big ones on this, on these over here. You can already see them. Look at that thing. Huge. Yes, trellising has been a huge thing for us. It certainly helps. I mean, again, look at that. I mean, so these are indeterminate, which means they trellis, they grow up. So, I mean, you can tell that those things are big. I think we got a really, I mean, there's more there. Let me go back to this really huge one over here. This one, I, it took me a while to find. After she pruned it, I was able to actually find it. But look at this. I mean, look at that. That's huge. It's like my whole, whole hand right there. Oh, Don Ray said the last year her Ramapo tomatoes knocked over her trellis or her tomato cage. I want tomatoes. This isn't just like something I'm growing. Uh, there's a lot of things I'm just growing just because they're nice and perennial, but tomatoes are very, very important to us. <laughs> so this is this makes up canning t uh, tomato sauces for spaghetti, uh, salsas. I mean, just we like tomatoes. 
for those, those reasons. So if I have to take extra measures for that, I'm going to do that. <laughs> yep. So, you know, you do what you like. I mean, find your plants that you really enjoy and give it your all. You know, don't be afraid. I mean, our tromboncino right here is just taking over. That's another one. I got to go on the other you side. Show, her, show them that. What is this called again, babe? That's um, uh, Rosette's Roselle hibiscus. Yes. We have four of those, and we have stinging nettle in the in the middle. So that's our stinging nettle right there. Yeah. It's doing really well. Really, really it hurts when you touch it, though. <laughs> I learned the lesson the hard way. We don't know about that stinging nettle, y'all. I know a lot of y'all look north here. So let me look. Look at this tromboncino squash right here. Look at this. Look, it starts up here and goes all the way down and curls up down here. Uh, we live in Texas, so we have a very long growing season. So um, this is our first year doing the hibiscus, uh, but we will be. Um, whenever these really start blooming, cause like I said, this is our first year. We planted them this year. Uh, once they start blooming and everything, yeah, she's going to be doing a lot of medicinal stuff with them. Uh, we're excited about that. She's been wanting to do them for a while when we finally were Let's able to get them. Part of the failures. Our I last found, frost was I around found, May 5th. Woo. I found a disaster. Where do you live at, ma'am? Okay, All right. Guys. Here's a failure in the garden, all right? Heads up. how I told you to keep up with your tomatoes, trellis them. These are so heavy that if you come over here to the stem, they just broke the stem. Look at that. Yeah. So what I'm going to attempt to do, I'm going to raise this and kind of just work it together, probably string it together, see if that'll help at least until they ripen. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this is so heavy. Like, feel this, babe. Like, how heavy... <laughs> oh, she's in West Virginia. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's like <laughs> that's like a pound or two right there of tomatoes. Yeah, I know. So I'm going to try to keep this up. So, guys, you know, raw footage here in the garden. Real raw. You know. But, hey, you know what? That's what gardening's about. And right. thank you um, for saying our gardening looks wonderful oh, or is you. just dreamy, Amea. Thank you so much. That's so sweet. Yes. A lot of, a lot of work went into this. A lot this thing <laughs> and like i said if you didn't see our sunflower video those are those same sunflowers and they're over man they're over eight foot tall right now oh that one in the back is eight foot tall i mean them things are huge i mean our fence is six foot so you can kind of see how much taller they are than our fence um she's got what is this stuff again babe come free Bocking 14, so it's not going to be invasive. Oh, look at this. Look at these weeds poking their heads through. Like, right. hey, I own this place well, or something. Get them weeds out of there. So, yep, that's our comfrey. I'm going to turn it around real quick. So, that's what we got going uh, here in the garden and everything. Um, uh, she said Bocking 14 uh, with the type of comfrey. She did not want it to be invasive. If you have a big farm, like 40 acres, invasiveness won't be invasive. But for us, <laughs> it'll be invasive. Yeah. As you can tell, we have a small space. It looks big, but really it's, it's not as large as some people. So we try to use our space wisely. Uh, again, that's why we do our trellising. That's why we do methods of growing up instead of growing out in a lot of our uh, vining plants. So I'm going to show you something else. I don't know if she wants us to see this, but I'm going to show it to you because I think it's pretty cool. So over here we have some of the cuttings that she did for the tomato plants. And she basically just replanted them. So she just stuck them in the ground, planted them. And we're going to hopefully have these start rooting and growing as well. And then we're going to have even more tomatoes growing. So, you know, the cuttings of your tomatoes, you can just replant them, stick them in the ground, water them in and stuff. And, you know, as long as they're like main stem cuttings and not just leaves. Yeah. So main stem cuttings. OK, so we did we use two methods here. We did a tomato mulch, which is the leaves. All that is is mulch. Yep. Then we did cuttings. See how those are? There's a cutting in the middle there. Trying to go slow. 
So yeah, but, there's a cutting here. See it? Yeah. Um, they've already, some of them have already rooted, I'm sure. Um, but this is all mulch. Yep. I don't like to, sometimes I just don't put it in the compost. I'll just throw it on the ground. I, it's just what it is. <laughs> Good luck. I just heard that recently only that person put it in water to start the roots. I'm going to try that this year. Yeah, we've done that before too, and it works just yep. like, it, it works awesome. Yep. We've, we've tried both methods and they've worked out pretty well for us either way. Right. Um, so, I mean, you can do it either way, depending on how you want to do it. Um, but we've, we've had success in either way. So, um, definitely try it and, and go for it. It's a good way to extend your, uh, stuff. There's our handsome little boy. He's been playing in the water. He's been swimming. It's a beautiful day in Texas to swim. It's beautiful. Mm-hmm. So. Our chamomile's still going. Which one's chamomile? Oh yeah. The yellow one for tea. Yep, right here. Chamomile. Chamomile. Beautiful. Daddy, can you eat this? Herb. Daddy, can you eat this? Yeah, you can eat that. Mm. Mm -hmm. Our marigolds are intensely okay. huge. What is this? Are these even peppers? What? Yes, those are peppers. Those are those um, peppers at Bland's Land Promised Land Ranch. Bland's Land's Promised <laughs> Land's <laughs> Ranch. <laughs> Promised Land, Land Ranch. Ranch have given us. Um, I don't know what kind they are, but look, they're already producing those little purple ones that are. I know. I'm. Out. I'm interested in those. Very Never had these before, so it's first year. I'm. I'm excited about that. Mm -hmm. So. You must be. This is deal, right, babe? Yes, that's deal. So yeah, our deal's going really look well. Our marigolds. Marigolds. Let me do a slow sweep to the marigolds. Ta um, massive tomatoes too but i just it blows me away the little varieties of marigolds at like the big box stores compared to one seed that you can plant in your garden they get so big and pretty and i love them yeah so if you see marigolds around our garden it's all by seed yeah and they reseeded too this year we didn't plant Ow. any they yep reseeded like i'll show you one that just popped up randomly so here's one that just popped up randomly. Right. There's two there that popped up randomly. So, I mean, they reseeded and kind of just took off. You are eating lemon balls. I know. He asked me if he can eat them. I said yes. That's so Heard so much about comfrey and have no idea what it is. We just learning from all y'all. <laughs> oh, so comfrey, um, uh, comfrey, you can dry it out and you can add it to your animal feed. Like for chickens, pigs cows horses which it just dry it out and they love it it's a good i guess you would call it a super crop yes it's a super food for uh animals and yep. you can make skincare out of it you can do um comfrey balms and uh, I'm eating chamomile. no that one's lemon balm. Yeah, lemon balm he's eating lemon balm grow comfrey it's a good good emergency situation for your animals it is oh you moved the bucket yeah, because I had to use it. Oh, fertilizer. We used to have fertilizer bucket yes. here full of it. Comfrey is a super fertilizer as well. If you just uh, soak the leaves in water um, for like, I don't know, a week, they will turn into amazing fertilizer and you just dilute it with water and you water your plants. It's like supercharged. Yep. I mean, the leaves are huge. I've so. cut them so many times. <laughs> yeah, we've harvested our comfrey quite a bit already. And yeah, that's why we got comfrey as well, Dawn, because uh, our animals love it. And it grows so fast. I mean, look at that. That's huge. Um, so we're just growing that to feed our animals and to cut our feed cost. Uh, because as we know, prices are going up right now with everything. So feed cost is going up as well. So we're trying to do our best to lower our feed cost um, in all of that. Our animals enjoy it. They do. They really like it. Sons enjoying stuff. We plant daikon radishes a lot and they want to seed. If you didn't know what radish seeds look like, look up closer. They're like little pods and then the seed is inside. Wow, my hair is a mess. Love you guys. <laughs> so yeah, that's it right there. So, you know, plant radishes one time and woo wee seeds for days. Daikon are my favorite. She worries about her messy hair. Poor 
She looks good that way. I don't know. I enjoy her in the garden. When she's out here doing her thing, man, she's she's beautiful. Gorgeous. Absolutely. Look at my update. Oh, you can tell them the lavender. It's looking so good. It's like three years old. Dawn says your hair is beautiful, babe. Oh, thanks. A little, a little wacko right God's Construction says they're saving their collard green seeds for the first time. Cool. Yeah. I don't think I've ever saved collard green seeds. I don't think so. We're doing lettuce for the first time. Yeah, we are. Lettuce. So let me look at the lavender real quick. She wanted me to show that. Look at it. Ah, we thought this thing died in the freeze that we, we had. We thought it died like three times, and it's just, it's just it's so happy. Yeah, coming back so well. I mean, it's like in nature here. Oh, look, and the, the strawberries are oh, flowering yeah. again. Yep. I didn't and this little that. sign is so awesome. I've been so busy with other plants, I didn't even notice that. Let's see if we can even... Let's see what we got Look, here. Remember, there's a wasp nest up there. It'd be all right. It's up there, I think. Okay. So yeah, strawberries Strawberry. are regoing, yes. which is Our exciting. Bee bomb is ginormous. Yeah. So. Grow bee bomb, guys. It's a wonderful tea, and bumblebees galore all day. Yep. It's the bee bomb. Well, that's, that's one, one of, of them. them. Let me show you the other one. You can cut them. And plant them elsewhere. So here is our other one. And yeah, I was sitting here earlier today and there was just bumblebees. There was like two bumblebees all over this thing going back and forth. Yeah, I keep cutting it. And then what's this one back here, babe? That's oregano. That thing ain't. I, so, I cut that thing 500 times. <laughs> there is oregano. And I've seen honeybees like crazy on that one the last few days. Um, if you didn't know how to save lettuce seeds, you let them go to seed or flower. And right after the flower, these little fuzzy things. Can you see that? Mm, They're yeah. seeds. Look at the little fuzzy things. Oh, I have oh. never, ever saved lettuce seeds before. But I'm going to do that. That's why this is this big fluff ball. <laughs> I'm going to do that this year. Usually I'm kind of just like throwing it all over the place mm. and letting lettuce do its thing. But... Yeah, we're trying to get into harvesting seeds quite a bit. And not be as lazy in the garden. I mean, it's nice to be lazy. You can just throw seeds, but I want to save seed <laughs> this yeah. year. Yeah, because you know what? It's good to learn because you may not ever always be able to buy. Look, our tripod cat, Lily. What does she have on her face? What is she eating? I don't know. Just some sticky thing. What you got, Lily? Probably a spider web. Yeah, it is. Sorry, Lily. It's our little tripod cat. She's our indoor-outdoor cat. She's spoiled. Very spoiled cat. Yep. What are these? Ask them if they know what these little bugs are. Oh, stop, Hollis. Guys, these okay. little dancing bugs. Like you see. See if them? I can get them. Every time I move them, they start moving. Do you see them? That sense. little black thing right there. See, they're like all over so many of our plants. If y'all know what they are, comment Look, below. They're like dancing. Yeah, comment below and tell us because we have no idea. They're not. They don't seem to be harming the plant. This is all crickets. And yeah. Is anyone else dealing with like small crickets and grasshoppers? I mean, they have eaten up our long bean plants like crazy. Yeah, they're like destroying things. I mean, thankfully they haven't killed them, but they have definitely eaten them up quite a bit. Uh, but our long beans are growing and trellising up, which I'm thankful for. I love it. And look, I added these lights not too long ago. They're like little solar lights. So at nighttime they turn on and it's like a little tunnel of lights. So that's what I like doing. I like decorating. Me too. I like decorating. <laughs> Don says, nope, I have no clue what the bugs are, but I'm not an experienced gardener. But, but Daddy, I love, I love decorating when it's the summer. You do love I, decorating? I, honestly, I literally feel like every year there's a new insect that we've never heard of. Yep. And I'm Googling what it is. It's See? like they never there, Oh, that's a squash bug. It is beautiful. Guys, squash those squash bugs. Look at that thing. Make sure you kill those. Kill them. Ugh. It is beautiful. Yes, um, I squash that with my hand. Yes, she's not afraid to get her hands dirty. They drive me nuts. What is a squash bug? But yes, it is beautiful when these lights Daddy, come on. Is... Mommy already killed it. Huh? Mommy already killed it. Oh. I squished it. Oh. Yeah, I tried to do, um, like I said, I don't know. This just came out of nowhere. I was like, oh, I think it'd be cool. I did it as like an experiment. Look at our trash can. It's doing much better. Okay. Got to go to the trash can. Yeah. 
swoop around, switch the camera. Look at that I camera motion. Everything. Look at this. So we had a, we did a video on the container, weird container gardening. This is a trash can. My rosemary's doing good. Our lavender. All right, bye, Dawn. Thank you for bye. stopping in. My lavender, lemon thyme. These are all from cuttings. This is like some daisy that my um, cousin gave me a huge plant and then winter was coming, so I just cut a piece. And then I cut this piece from the rosemary, cut this piece from the lavender. Like you can literally cut pieces from your plants and just yep. put them in water and they'll grow so good. Hello, Working Man's Garden, Fort Worth. Just subscribed this morning. Well, hello. Nice, hello, Fort Worth. Man, Fort Worth is beautiful. It is. So yeah, this, so this trash can that we have here is just a galvanized trash can. I drilled a bunch of holes in the bottom of it, filled up probably about a quarter of it with nothing but bricks. And then we put compost, like um, almost like the Hugo culture method going from there. And then we filled it up with good compost and soil. And we just been growing stuff in it. I mean, it's been working great. It's good for uh, plants that need free draining soil. Cause you yeah. can just fill this thing up with water, let it it's pour up awesome. to the bottom and then it's good to go. So, but man, I'm thankful you subscribed to us. Um, hope you enjoy it. This is our, one of our elderberries <laughs> here. The other two are those massive ones back there. This is also kind of another experiment for us. This side of the garden is like the messed up side of the yeah. garden. Yeah. So look at the ground. <laughs> as you can tell, no mulch. I know there's a blackberry plant like melting over there. So this, again, this is the side of the garden that you don't see very much. But look, we got a moringa tree there. Daddy, look, more of those little dancing bugs. Daddy, I know, they're all over the place. I have no idea what they are. Daddy, come on, look. Hold on, buddy. And look, hold on. Look at our elderberry. It's flowering. Yeah. Uh, and I got, I think we, oh, look, be kind. No, oh, that's an old sign. We've had that for like four years, I think. Yeah, when we first started. When we had bees at one time. Yeah. And look, there's some more. Our only issue is this one needs to be pollinated with this one. And this one has no flowers. So hopefully we'll get some berries. You need two different varieties of elderberry to get elderberry. Correct. You but can't. The flowers are also very medicinal, so you can also use the flowers. Yep. You can't just plant one elderberry and get berries. It doesn't work that yeah, way. Yeah, it doesn't work that way. <laughs> Moringa, extremely medicinal as well. Yes, this stuff's amazing. This is our first year to actually have this growing really well okay we actually thought we killed some because we planted three of them this is a new plant from this year and then we had one that came back out of nowhere look at it, it sprung right back up again we got to do some weeding in this area so please excuse all this tall grass i mean i think so because this is how our yard used to be before we mulched it Yeah, that was, we bought some really good cedar mulch. Hollis, don't swing on that, please. You're gonna tear the gate up. Get off. Thank you. What the? So yeah, this was cedar mulch um, that we purchased someone up in, I think the colony area are around there. They own a cedar mulch mill and they said they were looking for someone to take the, their chippings off of their hands. Um, so we got in contact with it. Well, thank you, God's Construction. We love it too, and we definitely make the best of it. Uh, but so he was asking us, and he was like, honestly, I'll give it to you cheap. Uh, we just had to pay for uh, a little bit of gas for him to get here. But I got 16 yards of this chipped cedar mulch for like 250 bucks. So... Yeah. I mean, it's really good hardwood cedar. I mean, it's great. It's been that amazing for us. Cedar keeps a lot of pests away. Yeah, cedar is a very good uh, natural bug control. And look at our apple tree. It's doing really well. We actually got some apples on here. Let me show you a couple of them. Let me go around this thing here. Go up. Look at them. Oh, little cute little apples. See, those dancing bugs are everywhere. Oh, he left. They're on every plant that I see. They're just around. But yeah, we got some apples coming in. I think we got some more. Yeah, right there. We got about a dozen apples coming on our tree. There's two more right there. 
So I'm excited because this is a, uh, I believe this is a gala apple tree. So those things are going to turn pretty red when they're ready to go. I mean, it's beautiful. Looking forward to it. We also planted a uh, Fuji apple tree over here, which I hear is really good for desserts and like apple pies and stuff, which I'm a Southern boy, so I'm, I'm kind of a sucker for apple pie. Give me a good warm apple pie with some vanilla ice cream on top. Man, now you're talking. Dancing bugs. Yeah, let me try to see if I can show them to you. I don't think that's the name of them. That's just what we've called them because we have no idea what they are. Let me see if I can find them for you real quick. Maybe you'll know. I'll go back to where we've seen a bunch of them. And this is our rain harvesting system. If you haven't seen it, check that video out. It's really awesome. I think anyone and everyone that's thinking about gardening should begin to install one of these. It's, it's a huge benefit. I even have a solar powered pump system connected to it. There's the panel and it's a transfer pump to water our garden with. So it's not gravity fed, but it's actually uh, a pump feed. Let me see if I can find those dancing bugs. I know they all probably left for the night. I don't know. Let's see. Oh, uh, that's probably why. Oh, I can't make it focus. There's one like right there though. Can't get it into focus though. That one? Okay. Okay, let's see. Oh yeah, they are. So those things, they hide. Do you see them? Love to know what those are. We call them dancing bugs because when you move, but see, they just dance around. So I don't know what they are. We need to figure it out one of these days. I mean, if they're not harmful, I, I'm not worried about them. But uh, this is, is this another black blue uh, blackberry bush? Uh, Blueberry? Yeah. Blackberry? So this is one that we planted too, and it's kind of just letting it kind of do its thing over here. Hopefully we'll get something from it. We experiment a lot. Um, you know, that's part of gardening is just trying to see what works and, and continuing on. You know, not everything is perfect. Um, that's what gardening is. You try, and if it messes up, you go and you try again. I keep forgetting about that satellite dish on our house. I need to get that thing off. I just seen it. Sorry. Um, but, yeah, you just got to try things. You know, if you think you're going to like it, try to grow it and see how it works. I mean, research your, uh, your growing zones and... Um, Cantopolis Homestead. Hey, how are you doing? Hey, that's my friend. She said, that's my friend. So, you know, try it. I mean, don't be afraid to try new things. Um, I've always called them sharpshooters. Not sure if that's the proper name for them. Okay. If I'm seeing them right, hard to tell on a lot. Yeah, I know. I tried to get the best I could. What do they do? Are they good, bad? Any information on them? Let us know comment you know what i'm saying what you know about them um but yeah don't be afraid to try it you know we've tried a lot of things we failed at some things, so many things. Um, i'm actually struggling if you watched our video on how to plant uh the fruit trees i'm actually struggling to keep three of the five alive right now i don't know what's going on with them um, i've contacted the company for help and i'm doing everything i can so i'm hoping they survive in jesus name I, I really do. I really pray that they survive. Yeah. I don't want to have to replant. Yeah. I believe they sap their sap suckers kind of like aphids. Oh, man. All right. Well, go back to work, God's construction. What Love you, man. I don't know why you're going to work this late, but who knows? <laughs> construction work, I understand. I've been there before, so I know you work crazy hours. Yeah, he said they're sap suckers. Man, that's Kind of like aphids. I'm going to have to... You Man, we got them. tons of them, too. That stinks. That does stink. Especially if they're on my apple tree. I'm not going to be happy about that. I want them things yeah! gone. He's just over here eating up the lemon balm. Really? Trying is most of the girl. Exactly. It really is. You got to try. I mean, don't be afraid to try new things. I mean, we tried growing Trumboncino squash for the first time last year, and we absolutely loved it. So we're doing it again this year. Um, 
we did not get to plant the um, Armenian cucumbers. Um, we thought we planted some, but they ended up being just regular pickling cucumbers and other cucumbers. Uh, we do have one right here, as you can see, between the tomatoes. We're not sure exactly what it is yet. It just it looks like a cucumber plant. I'm hoping this is Armenian cucumbers because, again, we really like those. Um, I have to see if they will grow here. Do you mean the um, or the tromboncino squash? What uh, what state are you in? If you don't mind me asking, you may already know, babe. Who? Uh, Kentopolis Homestead. In, uh, Washington. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm not from Washington. I mean, they they might grow there. I don't see why not. As long as you have a sunny spot. A sunny spot, she said. She's the the grand gardener here. I call her the master gardener. I'm just the day laborer. <laughs> she out here doing all the work and I'm just shoveling, you know? <laughs> I know. That's why she keeps me around. Oh yeah, that's right. I already showed it on the video, but you wasn't here. So let me show you again real quick. Our giant tromboncino that is just taking over right now. All right, here we go. Oh, ah, too much. There we go. Whoever rewatches this, I'm sorry. But here it is. Look, it starts there and it goes all the way down. And they root on the ground. Look at that. Crazy. I mean, absolutely massive. I mean, compared to that, and that's like the size of my hand. So my hand's about six inches. I mean, that thing is huge. I mean, it's and probably like three foot long. And it, it can be used as a summer squash green or a winter squash orange. Yep. Yeah. Goodness is right. So, I mean, think about that. You grow one of those, you can use that a lot. I mean, that's a lot of squash in one plant, good. which, again, is another reason why we got it because it gives us a lot, a good bang for our buck, you know? And We're not every time it touches the ground, the vine, it reroots itself. I have little roots all over the place because it wants to thrive. Yep. So that's that's why we kind of like it too. Then Love those dual purpose squash. Yeah, they're awesome. What you want to tell them? <laughs> Nothing. Nothing. Okay. But yeah, so I just wanted to show you kind of what we've been doing here, working out and, and doing stuff. Working out? Yeah, working out in the with, garden. With weights? No, not with weights. <laughs> so, and then we have, I think this is a cucumber plant. Or not cucumber, um, cantaloupe plant. That's just... It was supposed to be cucumber. It's supposed to be cucumber. Wait, can I but it's cantaloupe. Uh, no, buddy, your garden's kind of overrun. Please. So there's there's cantaloupe that we got, which I'm thankful for. I love cantaloupe. So, and then you see we got, he is the cutie. Unfortunately, he's too cute for his own good. He uses his cuteness for our weakness. So see, butternut squash. And we've got quite a bit of them growing here. So we're getting good. We got some watermelon coming up, which again, I'm excited for. We love watermelon. And jump over there. She's like, here, here's the better spot. Lots of, lots of butternut. Boom, look at that. And then there's little tiny ones. Little bitty I ones. I don't know why they're so tiny. She said tons of them. There's just as many on this side as that side. Over here trying to make me look bad. <laughs> I know. My wife loves me. She would never do that. Yep. So again, sunflower galore. Like I said, those things are massive already. Tomato. Okay, Cantopolis. I don't know which one's bigger, that one or the other one. I don't want to show you yet. I'm trying a watermelon this year. Okay, so look, look at this, Maggie. Look at how big this is. Really the size. Oh, bigger than the palm of my hand. <laughs> I mean, that's huge. It's like a softball almost. Well, it's supposed to be like a Roma tomato. So that's pretty big for Roma. Yeah. Like that kind of 
Yeah. And there's another one on that one here. Look at this one. That one. Look at that beautiful flowers. I mean, come on. Who wouldn't love that? Trust me. Like, look, look at this. I could literally get lost in there. Just huge. So many sunflowers. I mean, over my head. We did not plant those. Look at this. I'm six foot and they're taller than me. We didn't plant those. Uh, I'm almost positive somebody has a bird feeder somewhere and the birds are taking the seeds and throwing them in our yard. Because those are like common sunflowers. Uh, Bocking 14 is the comfrey we're growing. Yes, Bocking 14. It's non-invasive, so it's not going to take over your whole garden. So if you're working but with... it can still be grown by roots. It can be grown by roots. But, but not by seed. No it's... seed, only roots. Yes. So... And look at my borage. So these little flowers here, borage is extremely medicinal as well. Um, those flowers, you can cut them out, cut them off. And they taste exactly like cucumbers, like a little burst of cucumber. Yep. And you can sugar them and you can save them in the fridge and decorate yep. cakes or whatever you want to do. Yep. So this is, like I said, our comfrey that we have. The Bocking 14. So, I yeah, mean. Yeah, I mean, look at this. Thing is huge. Enormous. So. And we've cut this multiple times. Yeah. So if you're working with a small area or a smaller area, that's perfect for you. You can use this for so much stuff. And we have four of them. And look how big they are. We I have mean, five, but the other one wasn't doing so hot. Oh, wow, yeah. Look at the little squatty little guy. But it keeps dying and coming back. He's like, oh, look at me. I'm trying. <laughs> and his bigger brother's like, hey, hey, I got you. So. Oh, my God. Yeah, our Swiss chart is getting out of hand. I try to cut this and give it to the. We got some good peppers coming up, too. Well. I mean, nothing's produced yet. Not peppered wise we but them late. you know we're extremely late definitely getting a late start on our pepper which is weird because last year we did really good with peppers that's because i planted them on time we had cayenne we had um serranos we had uh regular jalapenos so we were doing good and then we got these two over here as well that's growing so but that's kind of what we're working on in more sunflowers you know can't ever get more than that. What are those flowers again? Zinnias. Zinnias. That's what I thought. And we have um, salvia in the back, or I think that's salvia or sage, something like that. Salvia or sage. It's a perennial. Look at them beautiful flowers, though. You know what? If you love flowers, plant zinnias. They're gorgeous. Every petal is a seed. Yep. So every petal is a seed. That's interesting. But, yeah, our animals love eating out of our garden, too. Um, again, that's why we pick certain things that they can eat. We're going to raise Muscovies in here. Yep. We're going to get two Muscovies and raise them in our garden to eat all the bad bugs and insects. Because Muscovies, they don't want your plants. They want the bugs. And they're, very, they're foragers. They're natural hunters. They even nest in trees. And Muscovy duck. They're not really ducks, either. Um, there's, like ducks from mallards and then there's muscovies and muscovies are big and i hear they taste like roast beef i know you probably won't want to hear that but they do from what i hear so we're gonna raise muscovies and yep. they also if we breed muscovies with another duck their babies will be mules and they will be sterile so make sure if you're gonna breed muscovies breed them with muscovies yep little tidbit yep and they're actually from like the turkey goose family or something from what i heard i think they're like a cousin to the turkey or something but that's no idea. that's another thing we're doing but yeah that's it guys that's kind of what we've been out here working on and doing i had three and the eagles are two the drake keeps attacking the turkeys wow yeah, drake's that's yeah drake's yeah are... i hear they're very aggressive the yeah, drakes they're very scary so we don't want any drakes we, we want just the the females we already have um wells harlequin ducks we have three feet no four females to one drake no, three females to one drake okay three females to one drake so um that's enough for us as far as the drake the muscovies we have duck eggs hatching once they once we're gonna get two females have them in here and maybe put another female with the other ducks um because we have another Muscovy female in there. Okay, so Working Man's Garden says want to trade some root divisions. 
I'm growing Bocking 4, also a sterile variety, but said to have a deeper root than 14. I don't know though, I'm not digging 10 feet down to find out. Oh, that's pretty cool. I don't blame you, I wouldn't dig 10 feet down either. Um, yeah, I'm definitely not trying to dig that far. But I mean, I don't see why we couldn't do a a division yeah, swap. Definitely. I didn't, yeah. See, I was always curious about that too. I never looked into it, but yeah, everybody recommended Bocking 4 or Bocking 14. Yep. So I didn't understand the difference. So, I mean, if you want to trade it up, we can. Here's our little son now. He got his boots on. <laughs> You're silly. Huh? My swimming stuff on. Yeah, with his swimming stuff on. So, yeah, I mean, we'll, I, mean, I don't see why not. I mean, if we're trading, I'm all for trades. Yeah. That's how uh, the world used to run, right? Trade yeah. and barter. Oh, yeah. Go around, try to figure out what you need That's and who how has it. It's going to start running again, I'm sure. Oh, I think it's already getting there. Right. We've already bartered a rabbit for beef. Uh, we've bartered, um, and now I can't even think of some other stuff. If our dog keeps acting up, we're going to barter her. Anyone need a good dog? <laughs> She's a sweetheart, but that, this man. She's a black no! herd, um, German Shepherd her. mix. No, I'm kidding. We're not going to bother her. She's We're so not. sweet. We, we do. She's she's part of our family. She does drive us nuts. Yeah, she's the annoying member of our family. <laughs> but it's good to know. Right, so, yeah. Guys. I think we're about to get off here. Um, again, thank y'all so much for watching. I want to come over here so she can talk to you as we get off. Son, you want to get in here? Sure. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, y'all have a wonderful time. Great mm -hmm. weekend. Uh, have a blessed Sunday tomorrow. And I pray y'all have a great time. God bless y'all. No, Bye. Here. What? Jesus. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>